Uh, welcome, thank you. Um, welcome to the new season. I hope you guys have had a, a very good summer. Um, we're really, really excited about um, this coming season and um, questions. Thanks. Uh, good morning, Mazai. How are you? Good morning, Doug. Good. A um, couple things. How would you characterize your summer in trying to improve the roster, and how did that go? And could you comment on the Knicks lawsuit and whether they're, what your thoughts are, and if there have been any repercussions in staffing levels for you? Uh, maybe I'll start with the Knicks uh, lawsuit. Um, I think there has been one time in the history of the NBA that um, a team has sued a team. One time. Go figure. Uh, your other question in um, building the team. I think we finished uh, a really tough season and with um, lots of decisions we had to make. Um, we uh, uh, obviously we had the coaching change, and I think this was big for us um, to maybe bring in some new energy um, and start afresh. Change is, is good um, on the player side uh, and on the uh, team side. Um, we, we went in with a couple of different approaches on um, how we could uh, go about building this team and uh, whether it was breaking it down or continuing. Um, with some of the pieces we have, some of the players we have. And um, sometimes that comes with the opportunity that you are going to get uh, in terms of um, changing players. I think in terms of Fred, I think Fred got a good opportunity and uh, he took that opportunity and we had that conversation uh, with Fred uh, in free agency. I think. With the way we finished uh, the season before, um, I think there was positivity with our team. Uh, we came into this past season um, wanting to play a certain way and be a certain way, and it didn't go very well. I think we referenced that New Orleans game when we didn't do so well. I think when the trade deadline came and we had the opportunity to get Jakob Pertl um, and give these guys uh, chance to at least play. They played better, um, but we also had the failure at the end of the season. So, could we have traded Fred uh, um, at the at the trade deadline? I think um, if that was a failure, we take responsibility for it. But um, sometimes it also depends on opportunity. Um, and also respect of the player, and we respected Fred. And so um, when Fred decided to um, uh, to go somewhere to better opportunities, I think um, it was good for him, and maybe it was good for us too. How was your summer, was the summer of trying to improve the team from last April to today? I think it has gone good. I think um, uh, we are... We're always going to be a patient team. Uh, we're always going to have a patient front office. Uh, we're, we're always going to take, I think, um, the opportunities sometimes that uh, come with us, uh, come at us. But um, these things are gradual, and I think um, drafting uh, Grady was good for us. I think um, replacing Fred with Dennis Schroeder, who had a great summer, was was good for us. So I think we got better uh, that way, and um, we'll continue to uh, think of the things that we could do better uh, with the team, with the opportunity that comes. Thanks. Go ahead, Mike. So I, uh, when we spoke at the end of the year, you know, you were very frustrated with uh, the cult, the direction the team had taken in terms of its culture. Mm -hmm. um, you know, but. Then this summer, you've had a number of players that have been pretty prominent in trade rumors. And going into the season, you have uh, some pretty key players that are heading into contract years or mm -hmm. free agency, potentially. And um, how are you 
confident that you know some of the outside issues won't affect how your team played on the floor the way it seemed to last year? Uh, you talk about you talk about culture. I think uh, there are new opportunities for um, new players on, for the players on the team uh, now uh, with a new coach. Um, I think uh, the approach is going to be uh, just different uh, with our team. I think those players will approach it differently. I think um, uh, in terms of contract, we've always, I think, taken care of our players here, and we're going to see how um, this is going to start and play out. We have time uh, to discuss with them or uh, to uh, take whatever direction we have to take. Uh, with this team, but uh, we've made it clear that we want to compete, we want to play a certain way, we want to be selfless on this team, and that's what we're going to do. On a similar note, uh, have you talked with Pascal about a contract extension? Uh, I've talked to Pascal. I haven't, we haven't talked uh, contract extensions yet. Is, is uh, you, you mentioned that you always take care of your players. With three of your more prominent players mm -hmm. entering free agency, is that a problem for you to deal with? Uh, is, is that, uh, I guess, it's not manageable? A, it's, it's not a problem for, for us to deal with. It's, it's the, these, these are, this is our jobs. And sometimes these things are not easy. Um, but um, we're very confident, I, I think, with uh, with these guys and, and those situations, but we're going to see um, what this opportunity is. Um, Coach Darko and his system and how uh, we all um, uh, get used to it, acclimatized to it, and we'll go from there. Hey, Masai, how you doing? Very good. Um, I've got to ask you about Lillard. To what degree were you interested how close do you feel like something was, and how much do you think the, the Lillard and Holiday trade shake up the dynamic in the Eastern Conference? Um, yeah, some, sometimes these things are sensationalized in a way that, you know, um, uh, to the public, sometimes it, it's not, it doesn't, it gets people a little bit too anxious, you know, and um, we understand that. We're always going to put ourselves in, uh, in, in the right place uh, to have opportunity uh, when these things come along. And I think there's a reason why our names are always mentioned uh, there when everyone talks about plan and direction. There's a reason why our names are always mentioned when these things come along. And it's, uh, it's growing our players. Um, I always said last year that we didn't play very well as a team, but individually our players do well and they have value. And I don't see it in terms of that, but our business is like that. And so um, with this opportunity, yes, we, 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 we are aggressive. We put our best foot forward. Uh, it takes two uh, to do a deal. And we believe in our city. We believe in this place. Um, and uh, we'll continue to attack those things when the right one comes, the right one will come. I think we've shown in the past that we could do that. Um, so uh, shooting was obviously a big issue for the team last season. 20th in three-point percentage, 25th in three-point attempt rate, I think 29th in pull-up jump shooting efficiency, and then you lose Fred, who's, you know, if not your best three-point shooter, at least your highest volume three-point shooter. So I'm wondering if that's something you feel like can be remedied with some internal improvement and shooting development, or if it's more a limitation that you acknowledge, but that you hope can be worked around in some creative ways. I think um, both things you've said, you know, like um, I think internal growth has always been something um, we, um, we've relied on here. and. Um, when the opportunity comes outside, uh, if there are chances to get these kind of players, of course we will. Um, but um, yes, we are relying on internal growth. We also drafted um, one of the best shooters in college basketball. Um, we're also getting back 
a shooter that we should had, have had last year in Otto Porter um, to help our team uh, a little bit. And with the internal growth of some of our, our players, um, we feel very confident. In terms of play, I think you're going to talk to Darko here um, but when he comes up. But yes, there's going to be a lot of cutting, moving, passing, you know, like in his system, which I think uh, will enable us to play um, a little bit better and maybe a little bit more efficient. We're going to ask you toward the back on your left side. Hey, Messiah. Mm -hmm. Masai, you cited uh, selfishness as a reason this team struggled last season. I wonder, how does that transfer over to this season with all the changes that you guys have made this summer? There will be no selfishness this year. Thank you. We'll go out to Aaron. Right here. Hi, Masai. Hi. Uh, you've spoken in the past about not wanting to be a, be a team stuck in the middle. Mm -hmm. um, you guys went 41 and 41 last year. You lost a really good point guard. Mm -hmm. Has your opinion of that evolved? Do you feel you have to commit hardcore one direction or another, or can you be a team that builds from the middle? Uh, it's a good question. You know, like there's a lot of parity in the NBA. You know, uh, um, and um, I think we sat here last year and I we said, do we know who is going to win? the NBA championship. I think I sat here and asked that question. And a couple of you in sitting in front here were like, well, uh, well Boston, uh, Milwaukee. I, I remember. You're laughing. <laughs> yeah, I remember everything. Yeah, yeah like, yeah. <laughs> so we, we don't know, you know, like that there is a lot of parity in the NBA. Yeah, we, 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 we can say, OK, it's these two teams. Um, Teams have made big trades. Three players go to one team. Everybody, the whole ride goes to there, and then it doesn't doesn't work, you know. Like so, which which one works, you know? Um, we want to always put ourselves in a position where we're growing our players, which I've said our players get better. We didn't play better as a team, but individually they got better. They're getting better, and then you put yourself in a position where. You know what? This is just how this business is. If opportunity comes, if the opportunity is right for us, I do believe that there is parity in this league. And now you can make moves or you can do things if you set yourself up well uh, at some point. Um, but our priority is to keep growing our players and keep getting them better. Uh, and I believe we have some of those players that we can get better. Hey, Masai, uh, you mentioned feeling good about Fred's contract situation last season. It mm -hmm. was kind of remarked upon. You mentioned him having a good opportunity with another team. What's stopping that from happening, let's say, some months from now with Pascal, OG, Gary, and also the fact that when you look at the history of the NBA, typically the teams that succeed over the year and the short term a lot of their players aren't on, ex or I guess, expiring contracts. Mm -hmm. There is a difficulty navigating this situation. And with the Raptors, the construction of the roster has never been like this. How difficult is it to navigate all the different things going on, especially while being a team that's coming off of 41 and 41? Yeah, it is difficult. It's difficult to navigate. And I said it um, again, you know, like if, um, what you are referring to is not trading Fred, you know, like at, at, in, at the trade deadline, you know, like then we take responsibility, you know, like for that. It's not something I'm, yeah, I'm running away from, but it also uh, has a lot to do with the respect of the player and what the opportunity is, you know, out there. We do believe in these players. Um, that's why we got them. That's why we drafted these players. Uh, the players that you are talking about, and um, I think as the year goes on, we will we will figure out, you know, like which um, uh, which way we are going to go uh, in terms of um, how they adjust to the new coach, a new system, and how we're going to play. Great. So we're going to John. Yeah. Go ahead. You you want to ask, and he wants to follow up. Typically, players like Pascal if you can get them on extension two times all NBA. Mm -hmm. Typically in the NBA, their play style supersedes or is 
presented as like the utmost thing to preserve or to elevate. Mm -hmm. uh, Darko, I'm excited to see what he implements with the team, but typically you don't see NBA teams say like, the system, we have to see how this guy works. Typically, as you say, you believe in these players. Mm -hmm. Wouldn't it make sense to go to the table immediately, say we believe in you, the extension, et cetera? Uh, yes, and and we do we do believe in Pascal. Uh, we do believe that um, a lot of our players didn't play the right way um, last year, and we want to see them play the right way. I said it that we were selfish. I'm not running away from that. Uh, we were selfish and we did not play the right way. So let us see it when we play the right way. Good morning, Masai. Uh, Good morning. You just mentioned the, the selfishness, and you said there will be no selfishness on this team. But I'm curious, how do you guarantee that? Like, is that conversations with the players? Is that relying on Darko, uh, you know, putting in more discipline or rules? I'm just curious, like, sort of the nuts and bolts of how you guarantee that. Yeah, it's conversations with them. Uh, we've, ha we've been having those conversations with the players. Um, I think it's, it's important that we communicate uh, that from all levels of of this team and um, and also with uh, Coach Darko, he believes in his system, his style uh, of play, and um, we'll see when we start. What was the feedback like from the players with those conversations? Was there accountability on their end? Was it well received criticism or? Yes, yes, it was, uh, and I think they had their opinions. We listened to their opinions but there was accountability. Thank you. Joe. Uh, Masai, with respect to Scotty, I know everyone's optimistic on a media day, every player, every team, but uh, in terms of what you've seen this summer, would you, how would you compare it to last year? Do you, have you seen anything different from him or whether it's the work ethic or the spirit in the summer? Um, do you think there's been a difference, um, Scotty Barnes, this off season compared to last? There's been a big difference. Um, sometimes we forget that um, Scott is young, uh, is a young player coming into a new league, uh, into a, a league for the first uh, couple of years. And there are adjustments that these players all have to make, um, especially when you're very young uh, in this league and you see it even, I'm sure, with, um, with Grady. Um, Scotty has, has worked incredibly hard this summer and has showed the commitment that he wants to get better. Uh, he's gotten stronger. Uh, his conditioning has gotten better. And, and he knows it. He, he's very confident. And um, he also knows, you know, like what you guys were saying last year and what, what happened last year, you know, like with the team also. Um, so um, all those are, are things that I think motivate him, but he's motivated to become a really good basketball player in this league and he wants to be great. That's all like Scotty has been and that's what attracted us to Scotty. Hi, Masai. Hi. Given the summer that Dennis has had with his success obviously at FIBA, does that change the role or grow his role on this team from what you originally had anticipated for him? Uh, you know, he had a great um, world championships and um, showed great leadership. Um, he's very competitive, and that's what we saw uh, in, in, in this player, uh, his first step, um, how uh, he attacks the rim. Uh, he plays with other players, and he's a defensive pest, and that's, what, that's the kind of player that we want on our team. Uh, his three-point range is getting better. His three-point shot is getting better. So um, I think Darko knows Dennis more than, better than all of us, you know, like, and I know that um, uh, he'll have uh, ways that um, he wants Dennis to show leadership and to play on this team. So um, i leave that to coach him, but he had an exceptional summer. Masai, when it comes to the, the pressures of your job, you know, from yourself, from the organization, from fans, media, um, how do you feel like that pressure has, has changed over the past couple of years? And how do you plan to just deal with the pressure of um, sort of, you know, what's at stake, people's jobs, you know, the future of the organization, trying to get back to the playoffs? How do you handle all that um, external and internal pressure? Um, 
Is <laughs> yeah. That, that's pressure right there. <laughs> Yeah, honestly, like um, our front office um, uh, staff, everybody, you know, like even honestly up to ownership, um, I, I, I've never felt um, I've been blessed um, with the opportunity to have a job like this. Um, I, I, I don't feel any pressure, honestly, losing, winning. Um, we want to win. We've been competitive here. Uh, every year we've had one losing season in, in the last 10 years, you know, like, and not good. We can continue and we continue to be blessed, but it's not something, you know, we think about. We just think about going and managing and trying to compete and do our jobs uh, the best way. And honestly, like, if I wasn't doing this, I'd be a happy person. Uh, same, I'd be the same person, you know, if I wasn't. Uh, doing this, but while I'm doing this is to win, to compete. There's no complacency here. I believe we're going to win in this city again, just like I said it before. And you guys looked at me the same freaking way, and I believe that we're going to win again. I'm sorry. I hope your uh, your summer was wonderful. Um, during the trade deadline last year. Um, you said you could only take deals that were on the table and you know the off season was a better time to sort of make evaluations about the long term health of the team mm -hmm. which sort of insinuates that um, the future was unsettled let's say mm -hmm. um, after you've a new coach you've re-signed Jakob Pertl Fred Van Vliet is elsewhere and Gary Trent um, took his player option does the future feel settled and is this the team that you want to take into the next season uh, yes, this is the team now that we want to take into into the next season. Did we look at other opportunities? Um, yes, we did. Did we look at uh, maybe even going younger? Um, yes, we did. But sometimes those opportunities uh, are there and sometimes they're not there. Uh, you can't force them. It takes two to do deals and uh, you move on uh, when those deals are not there. Um, the most important thing for us is we continue to grow our team and grow our players uh, and um, build their confidence and make the environment uh, where they play um, very conducive for them at least to succeed and to play better. And hopefully we can, uh, we can do that. I know everybody's looking for trades. I know everybody's looking for moves. I know. Um, trust me, the right one, when the right ones come and the right opportunities come, maybe we will take that, those opportunities. Yeah, on the subject of uh, potential trades, you mentioned that uh, going into this season, you will see sort of how everything fits with Darko. Um, does that come with the risk of going into the trade deadline? with sort of the idea that these players are expiring, their value may drop because other teams know that you kind of, if you want to pivot, obviously, that, uh, you know, you can only one way to go with that. Um, for the meantime, I, I keep saying it, you know, like while looking at these players, like growing to be in our organization, you know, like if we've come, you know, like uh, this far and, um, yeah, opportunity with trades are with, talk about hundreds and millions of them, you know. I wish you guys knew, you know, like what we go through, the calls we get, you know, like and how our business uh, works, you know. And um, But most difficult thing in this business is making trades and when a player leaves, you know, like this is, this is things that we have to navigate in, in our jobs. Um, so... Um, we'll continue trying to navigate them the best way that we can. And just to quickly follow up, um, er earlier you mentioned uh, about Pascal's extension. Um, can we get your comment on where you're potentially at with OG and OB's extension and also Gary Trent's extension? Uh, I think the time to talk about them is now, right? Uh, so um, we'll see how these conversations continue to go. Thanks, Will. Uh, we're going to have to go quick. So uh, to Warren and then to Ian and then we'll wrap it up. 
Hi, Ms. Uh, we talked a lot about trades and how these things can be sensationalized, um, but obviously the players see all this stuff with the way social media is these days, the news cycle. So I'm wondering how you can kind of make sure to manage the human element of things and, and what makes you confident in the leadership structure and like the maturity level of these players that these, these talks won't become a distraction? Um, yeah, I can't control what you guys do on social media, you know, like I, I don't, uh, me, I don't see it, I don't follow it like that, you know, in my job, um, but I do, <clears throat> um, I do have the feelings for the players, yeah, they are human and um, everybody is. Um, this is just the nature of how uh, the NBA is and the flux has become even more. Um, now with social media and player movement um, is one player tomorrow another day you know like our names will be brought up again and a lot of times you know when they're talking about example OG in these conversations you know like we were not even having conversations um, so um, these are things we relate maybe to the player and um, you hope you know that um, at least they've seen that um, we can assure them or talk to them or be honest with them when uh, these things come around and have to be done. Um, the best way with all these players is always to be honest and direct with them, and that's what we've always been here. Thanks, Masai. I know you've always been a passionate believer in the global nature of basketball. In the summer that you signed a German-born point guard and hired a Serbian-born head coach, I wondered how you reacted to seeing those two nations later competing for the uh, the world title, and I wonder what that suggests about the development of, of that side of the game and where that's going. When when we talk about um, basketball here in Canada, you know, like, look at what the Canadian team did. Uh, look at the Germany won the World Cup. Um, we always talk about players don't want to come here, you know, like the game is going global. Uh, how about we think about it that way and be patient and wait and see, you know, like what is the opportunity that's going to come to us. Last five players that have been MVP of the NBA have been international players. Five, last five times. And it looks like the next, it's going to, it looks like it's going to continue that way maybe, I don't know. <laughs> Maybe this is a challenge. <laughs> Maybe I should keep my mouth shut. Uh, but we're part of that. We're the only team in the NBA that's outside of America. And we're proud of that. And we're going to continue to be proud of that. And we should own it uh, because that's going to give us opportunity at some point. And when I look at what happened in the World Cup, it set things up. It set the Olympics is going to be unbelievable. Everybody is going to want to play in it. Uh, kids around the world see it. Uh, last three players, uh, this three out of the last five players have been African, or at least African-born, and Embiid and Giannis. Uh, so that gives players and youth around the world like hope and believe that they can play in this league. Same thing in Canada here, same thing here. Okay, so yeah, we need to believe in ourselves more and stop all this narrative of, oh, the player didn't want to come here, I won't come here. Well, they have their preference. They can go wherever they want. Yeah, but the right player or some player is going to want to come here and is going to want to play here. It's going to come and win here. Yeah, and hopefully we either grow that or we set ourselves up for that kind of opportunity.